Hey, welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, I'm gonna revisit a topic which I covered, um, I think last year or just over a year ago. And it was about UX prototyping tools, interactive prototyping tools, anything but basically takes users from one state to another in an interactive way. And I received a lot of feedback. Jesus. Sometimes you miss out on tools which are either way too alike to other tools which are mentioned. And as mentioned in the previous video, which you should definitely watch if, if this is your first time with this type of prototyping tool placement video or evaluation video or kind of like a demo video, you should definitely check the previous video, which I'm going to link down below because it's going to give you an insight. Today, I'm going to add these three big things to the list and place them on our scales of UX prototyping tools. Basically, we have a criteria of prototype fidelity. So how advanced is the prototype? Is it just a slideshow change? Or is it a, you know, variables based calculation based, you can do lots of validations, things of that nature would feel lifelike to the user ease of use? Is it easy to use? Is it hard to use time to master? What's the time to onboard and adopt it? Do you need a lot of years? Let's say to master it's like actual, let's say, beast but it takes so much get into it to actually use it. Price point, is it free? Free with some sort of twist. Then versatility, you know, how flexible is it? Does it contain simple sketching mechanisms and features? Does it contain interactive prototyping mechanisms and features? Does it allow it? And then feature relevance and Lindy effect, things which have history, could be a concept, a tool, a way of doing things, interaction, social aspects. If they remain for quite some time, it's likely that we're gonna remain for the same exact time frame plus one day for each day it gains. So let's say if I'm making videos for a, over a year and one day, it's likely that I'm going to make videos for one more year and one more day and then add additional days as I go. And it seems quite similar to UX tools as well. Let's say Axure has been in the market for what decades. Figma is very recent joiner. But without further ado, let's go through our scale so far. And let me just add these three bad boys to the list. We have now 19 tools. If you ask me, it's way too many, but let's go through the scales. Boom. And so I placed the new additions. So as mentioned before the scales, but majority of tools are always end up in that middle ground. That's usually the bell curve and then only a few. So I like to focus on the extremes and extremes are very specific. And usually the more specific the tool is, the more specific problem it answers and the more value it adds. And I'm going to talk to you about the extremes and also where I place the new additions, let's say. So prototype fidelity, you know, it's all about how advanced is the tool? Low fidelity? Is it just slideshow shift state to state? High fidelity? Do you have more to it? Is it, you know, can you animate things? Can you put variables? Can you put actual data? Can you import Excel sheets, things of that nature? And so, so there are no surprises. You know, a UX pin is great. Just in mind is to me a simplified version of actual Figma, let's say, is a body of sketch, but with all the collaboration tools and built around online capability and having your team contribute real time that the design system capability is just a no brainer that it's on the higher end. Now ease of use. Well, this is interesting because you know, most of the tool again, there's kind of like a lukewarm, it takes maybe a day to master most of the tools, it could take you years to master others, for example, complex things like actual supernova studio Webflow, frame framer x, something where you need to actually know some code, well, it's going to be on that left end of the scales. And the easier bits like envision sketch, you know, it even depends exactly what we talk about when we prototype, it could be that it's just state to state, that's easy. What if you want to make something more advanced? What if you want to layer it and stuff? And so I placed it in the middle. It doesn't really matter. You know, most of us, as mentioned before, like let's say all of these are probably going to be ending up on the same state. It's middle. It's average, basically. And time to master. That's a clear, clear, and probably most objective way because, you know, Supernova Studio, Axure, Webflow, I maybe would bounce Supernova Studio a bit below than Webflow and Axure. Uh, Framer X probably also a bit there origami studio maybe towards the middle you see there is a lot of flexibility there and as years progress my take is also gonna progress and improve 
UX pin, just a mine middle. Figma is a bit more on immediate because it's very similar to Sketch. Uh, very, very, you know, it's very intuitive, easy to pick. Most of them really are. Um, there is no big outliers here. Price points. Well, price points is very subjective too because some have perpetual licenses, some have subscriptions. Let's say Adobe XD was free. I made a mistake and placed it somewhere in the middle back in the day. Well, now it should end up somewhere here, still in the middle because we started pricing the subscription. So, hey, maybe they followed my advice and now put a price tag. As the famous Batman quote goes, you either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain. Not a fan, but hey. You might be. Who stupid enough to steal from us? He's not the problem, he's nobody. Ah, 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 ah. Ooh, he, I thought my jokes were bad. Give me one reason why I shouldn't have my boy here pull your head off. How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. <laughs> And when you expand, just in mind, again, middle, nothing too extreme. All of those subscriptions are up to like, let's say 20 bucks a month. That's a standard average. Versatility. Mostly what I find versatile is things which integrate with other tools. Let's say they do, let's say, design systems. They allow you to code. They allow you to tweak things, hack things, do UI design, do prototyping, do user testing, things of that nature. You could argue that other tools have that capability too because they come with a suite of things. But it's either not obvious, it's not as easy to master, let's say, or it has other dependencies on other scales. And future relevance? Well, Lindy effect. Again, I placed those things because I don't really know. It's This is very, very hard to predict. I know for sure that Axure is definitely going to remain for another decade, minimum. A sketch, hard to tell. I think Figma probably is going to remain longer than Sketch, to be honest, because we're a bit more advanced right now. Just in mind has been around for quite some time as well. I like it because it's simplified version of Axure. It's one of those tools which is quite niche. People love it. That's okay. UXPIN is the same. It has does a lot, but I'm not sure how you know sustainable it's going to be for the future adobe xd is definitely going to stay and it's because it's so dependent on other sweet products i think principle is fading a little bit in vision hard to tell it's probably going to be in the middle supernova studio again hard to tell all the bits which are let's say webflow is probably going to be longer framer x as well but as you can see, the scale shift a little bit year to year. You guys report new things in the comments. And so we are going to keep on updating. But this is 2020 edition of these scales. The best bit. Some of you requested for me to share this. And I might share it openly. I'm probably, I don't know if it works on Myra to give you view only access so I can keep updating. Because as I get more feedback, I might just change the positioning here and there. We've got 19 prototyping tools for 2020. There's definitely more coming up. There's let's say play on the horizon, which is like in the mobile screen, you can prototype different bits. I don't know how that's going to work. There's a bunch of other tools coming up and, you know, we might start implementing and putting it in. I'm going to leave the link down below to this thing so you can actually view it on your machines. As per usual, you can also take a screenshot, use it, abuse it, hack it, so forth. Leave a comment, subscribe to this channel, leave a like and stay tuned for more material.